Joining us now is Congressman Brad Sherman, Democrat from California. Congressman, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you again. Good to be with you. Last time you were on the show, you called me a hater because I was very much opposed to some of President Obama's policies. Am I a hater if I suggest that it is a jarring image to see President Obama dancing the tango or doing the wave at a baseball game juxtaposed with the image of mourning in Brussels? Well, I didn't uh, refer to you as a hater, but I did say that uh, many uh, of the president's opponents have come to hate him. And uh, we should be here talking about uh, what our policy is. Instead, uh, you, uh, you know, we can whip up a little political uh, food fight over uh, what the president did this hour, that hour. The fact is, heroic people, stalwart people in Brussels went and did their job the next day in whatever their job was and if it's the president's job this day to reach out to latin america if we ignore the rest of the world on every day on which we're concerned about islamic fundamentalist terrorism then we ignore the rest of the world 365 days the president so, uh, said um, I, I would rather talk about okay. what our policy ought to be in the middle east well, but uh, the, the president I, I'm not, did, you know I know, I know, I understand that, and let, let's not deal with, yeah. the, with that stuff. Uh, the, the president said uh, that ISIS is not an existential threat to the United States. I mean, he said that, and I think the man's got a fair point, but it's missing the point, isn't it? We're all worried stiff by ISIS. Europe is locked down. We're expecting attacks in America. I think the president missed the point by sort of going around the terror threat and just said, well, it's not an existential threat. And you say? Well, I think the president is being attacked for saying that by people who don't know what the word existential means. The fact is, he's never said it wasn't a major problem. We should not be on lockdown in the United States. We should not be preoccupied to the point where we think this is the only problem we face. Uh, uh, the word existential would conjure up the idea that the ISIS flag would be flying over the capital and ISIS armies would be invading the United States. That's obviously silly. There are people who conflate the word major with the word existential. I'm glad we have a president who knows what the word existential means. Are you comfortable with the president saying ISIS, defeating ISIS is my number one priority? It doesn't always seem like that, uh, Congressman, but are you comfortable with him saying that? I would say that that is our number one policy in the Middle East, maybe our number one policy for national security. I, I'm not in a position to say whether uh, increasing wages nationwide is more important than taking Raqqa. Those are in kind of two separate categories. But what we ought to be doing is changing our rules of engagement for dealing with ISIS. Because while we say we're arming uh, the right rebels in Syria, we insist that they swear that they will not fight against Assad. And so for that reason, we have only dozens of fighters uh, on the front lines uh, that have been armed by the United States. We say we're bombing ISIS, but only when we think there's a 0% chance of a single right. civilian casualty. If you run a bombing campaign that way, it's not a serious bombing campaign. You know, Congressman, I think we're edging towards agreement. I mean, <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Congressman Brad Sherman, Democrat from California. We appreciate you being with us, sir. Thank you. Thank you.